ओके हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर वैभव वेलकम टू एफ आर सी आर वाइवा सिटी सेशन थर्टी सेवन दिस दिस टाइम एंड टुडे इज अ स्पेशल सेशन बिकॉज वी हैव रिक्वेस्टेड डॉक्टर भूमि टू कंडक्ट दिस सेशन सो दिस इज अ दिस इज एन एक्सटर्नल सेशन लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर भूमि और डॉक्टर भूमि इज अ डेडिकेटेड कार्डियोथोरेसिक रेडियोलॉजिस्ट एंड शी हैज पास हर एफ आर सी आर एग्जाम रिसेंटली इन द लास्ट सेशन uh when uh, i was requesting dr bhumi to conduct one frcr viva city session for uh, for the uh, to be aspirants she expressed her uh, passion and commitment towards the education and in fact she loves mentoring uh, frcr to be aspirants so uh, in today's session i think dr bhumi is going to show uh, her uh, uh her experience we'll go through dr bhumi's experience also and before that uh, i would request dr bhumi to show cases for maybe around 40 minutes and 40 to 45 minutes and after that uh, uh maybe a short uh, period of feedback and then dr bharat will ask some uh, questions to dr bhumi uh, how did she prepare and what things to remember while uh while preparing for frcr to be exam how to prepare which books to refer and everything so uh, i'll ask dr bhumi to start the session i'll unmute everyone dr bhumi uh, can you unmute yourself are you able to unmute yourself Beta. Yeah, I think Doctor Bhumi will be able to unmute yourself now. Yeah, now I can yeah, unmute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll give. So, you... is my screen visible? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'll start with the session first for the candidate one. Okay, I'm ready, Doctor Bhumi. Okay, so this is the first case. I'll be giving you the history wherever it is relevant. Uh, so this is your first case. You may start scrolling. Uh, you can ask for request. Uh, request the control. Okay, I will request remote control now. Yeah, approved. Okay. So I'm presented with a CT chest post contrast study. I'm scrolling through the images before starting saying my comment. So what I could see positive in this study is that there is uh, an in, uh, intra-arterial um, homogeneous hypodense uh, circumscribed uh, mass lesion. Uh, it is centered on the um, interatrial septum uh, with um, its uh, mass projecting inside the right atrium, occupying most of its cavity. Um, I'm trying to see if there is any uh, fat density in the legion or um, any calcification. However, I couldn't see that. Uh, what I could see is that there is a central um, line passing through the uh, superior vena cava, um to the uh, right atrial cable junction um so my differential for this legion will include uh, being a thrombus uh, or emixoma i will correlate if these patients have had any previous uh, images like cities or any echocardiogram um and um if not uh, i will take this case further by notifying the referring uh, clinician that i'm worried about presence of thrombus uh, in the right atrium as very first possibility with uh, my differential, including myxoma. Um, I, I think that this patient should start anticoagulation because in either situation, the patient might develop um, clotting thrombosis that can shower. So I will uh, I will recommend anticoagulation until the patient undergo further study, either echocardiogram or cardiac MRI, whatever available in one institution. How do you think this patient would have presented? Um, maybe um, if if there is any sort of atrial fibrillation, um, it would might be uh, other things that might be showering. 
if there is any distal embolization. Okay, so what other investigations would you recommend for this case? Uh, echocardiogram and cardiac MRI. Okay. So moving to the next case. This patient presented with acute abdominal pain. Okay. Uh, so this is an MRI exit uh, CT course. Uh, T2 weighted uh, images uh, of a patient presenting with abdominal pain. Um, I'm scrolling through the uh, images trying to find the cause. What I could see that is that the stomach is dilated um, as well as the uh, second port uh, and the third port of the duodenum. I'm trying to see if there is any um, sort of um, filling defect. Um, however, what I could see is that uh, after the at the uh, there there is uh, a sort of concentric uh, thickening at the uh, duodenal junction. I mean here, um, the thickening is concentric, uh, homogeneous, um, with the smudging of the surrounding fat planes. Um, my differential will include. Um, um, because this is a short segment, so I'll be thinking about the plastic process first of all, um, as adenocarcinoma. Uh, my other um, differential will include lymphoma. Um, um, it's less possibly to be an inflammatory condition because it will be a longer segment. Um, I will see if there is any other uh, positive findings in the study. The pancreas appears normal to me. Um, the ghost, I, Would you I like to comment on the gallbladder? Yeah, I'm trying to see if the gallbladder is visualized here. I'm not able to see it definitely. Uh, I know maybe the, it is this structure. In my routine practice, I'll try to see it in other uh, plans. I mean, like in coronal plan, to be sure if this is the gallbladder or not. It might be contracted uh, with uh, some calculizing within it. Um, so you can take or... the coronal image. You can take. Okay. Have a look at the bowel again in the coronal okay. image. Again, I can see that there is dilatation in this small bowel. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just having a problem with this. Okay, I can see now. It's I just started struggling somehow with scrolling, but it is working. There is some differing here in the um mesentery. However, I couldn't find a correlate for this in the axial cuts. So can you correlate the bubble wall thickening which you were commenting on the actual image? Oh, okay. I think it is this area. But there is distal dilatation of bubble. Yeah. So, can you find the transitional zone? Yeah, just, yeah. Sorry, I think, okay. I think that... This is the transitional zone, and this is the area of concentric thickening. Okay, uh, would you like to summarize? Um, okay, um, this is a case of a patient presenting with acute abdominal pain. My area of, of concern was at the uh, duodenal junction with a short segment of stenosis. Uh, my first differential was neoplastic process. I will take this case further uh, by uh, referring the patient to the uh, gastroenterology team uh, for endoscopy and um, possibly biopsy. Um, and uh, if the positive, if the lesion was positive for malignancy, then the patient should be referred for um, oncology MDT uh, after CT uh, chest for uh, metastatic work. 
purpose is the next case. Okay, so uh, this is just x ray of an adult patient. Um, I could see that there is a, a left hyalur mass lesion um, here uh, that's um, causing, um, that overlies the, uh, the uh, left uh, hilum. Uh, the lesion is ill-defined. Um, there is no other uh, lesion scattered in either lung fields. There is no pleural effusion. Um, there is no uh, rib destruction uh, seen. And there is no metastatic lesions in the clavicles or the scapula. Uh, there is no evidence of pneumon dystinum or air under diaphragm. I can see that the aorta is um, is partially dilated um, and unfolded. This is probably consistent with age. So uh, my first concern is uh, left uh, bronchogenic uh, carcinoma. I'll take this case further by uh, doing CT chest um, um, and abdomen with contrast uh, for metastatic workup. And uh, if the lesion is central uh, in the bronchi, then endoscopic um, bronchoscopic guided biopsy should be done and the patient should be referred for uh, the uh, chest oncology MDT for management. Okay, what types of masses do you expect at this location? Um, I'm expecting a small cell lung cancer. Okay. So this is the next case. Okay. So this is uh, an MRI uh, of the brain, uh, axial cuts, uh, T1 uh, post contrast uh, weighted images. I'll first scroll through the whole uh, set of images and then start saying my comment. So my area of concern here was a, a space uh, occupying a legion at the um, uh, right uh, temporal loop. This is an intraaxial uh, legion that appears circumscribed, enhancing um, uh, it is circumscribed, enhancing homogeneous. Um, there is no similar uh, parenchymal lesions could be seen. However, uh, I can see that there is enhancement here at the busy meninges, um, as well as the uh, pachy meninges. Um, there is some enhancement here as well at the um, no, you can ignore temporal that. fossa. Uh, ignore uh, that. Okay. So uh, my concern is about the space occupying lesion, which is enhanced associated with uh, pachymeningitis. Uh, my first uh, differential will be tuberculosis. Um, is that the causing... only lesion? Uh, no, there are other, uh, I mean, here, pachymeningeal enhancement as well. And here, there is one lesion here at the gyrus rectus uh, on the right no, side. No, you can ignore that. Okay. Here as well, there is um, a lesion. Um, okay, in the ventricles as well, I can see here an intraventricular lesion um, at the uh, posterior horn of the uh, right lateral ventricle. So these are all intra and extra axial uh, space occupying uh, lesions in the brain uh, associated with uh, meningeal enhancement. As I said, my first differential will be uh, tuberculosis. I will take this case further by reviewing any previous chest radiographs for the patient. Um, and um, and if not, then CSF analysis should be done uh, and the patient should have CT chest um, to, to see if there's any lung lesions and then should undergo isolation um, as well as... Um, um, Would as you well like to correlate it in any other plane? Yes, I can see this in the um, sagittal cuts. I have the coronal cuts. You can take the okay. post contrast yeah. coronal. Yeah, yeah. So again, there is redu redu uh, there is redemonstration of the uh, legion uh, in the temporal loop. However, here it appears to me to be more uh, meningeal phase um, and being extra exit. So, um, but again, my differential will still uh, hold tuberculosis in my differential. My other uh, differential will include sarcoidosis. 
um, I'm worried, as I said before, about this lesion in the infratemporal fossa, but you said ignore it. But here, I think it's now continuous with uh, with the craniotomy seen in the skull. So I will come uh, revise the patient uh, operative notes if there is any craniotomy done before for this patient um, to know what was the operation done for the patient. Okay, so the next case. Okay, so this is an X-ray of the of uh, of hands of an adult patient. Uh, what I could see here that is there is a juxta articular, um, um, th there is bilateral symmetrical um, arthrop um, arthropathy uh, seen at the metacarpophalangeal joints uh, with the juxta articular erosions seen. Um, there is as well a faction of the uh, rest joint and the carpometacarpal uh, pharyngeal joint. There is some periarticular uh, osteopenia. There is sparing of the distal uh, interpharyngeal joints. So in this case, I'm more concerned about uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, I will correlate with the patient um, uh, um, rheumatoid factor if done for the patient or not, and it should be high in level. Um, and I would refer the patient for the rheumatologist for further management. Next case. Okay, uh, so this is a, a um, X-ray of a baby neonate, um, uh, probably uh, in the NICU. Uh, what I could see here is the um, in my routine practice, I would like to zoom to see more the fields. Um, however, what is uh, here appears to me as an emergency is that there is. Um, air under diaphragm, uh, suggestive of pneumoperitoneum with football sign. Uh, this is probably due to uh, necrotizing anterior colitis. Uh, this is confirmed to me by presence of mottling appearance inside the um, bowel uh, loops, uh, as well as uh, some uh, mural thickening here, I can see it. Um, um, before this, I should comment on the lines and tubes. The nasogastric tube is in place. Um, there is some ECG leads outside. Um, I think that this is, I'm not sure if this is a line inside the, um, uh, this might be, um, sorry. So this might be a, a, an umbilical venous catheter uh, that is um, passing through the um, IVC. Um, and here it should be uh, um, at the, uh, at the atrial cable junction. Um, I think it's in a good position, although it should be a bit higher, but it's okay. It's, it's not uh, in the um, portal vein, I mean. Um, regarding the lung feeds, um, uh, the, I could see that there is a good aeration of both lung fields, um, and I can't see uh, pneumosorex uh, or effusion. So to summarize, this is a case of pneumoperitoneum and a case of necrotizing intercolitis. I'll convey my findings to the uh, neurologist so that uh, they can manage the case and then um, do a sort of uh, serial follow-ups. Okay, so what are the predisposing conditions of necrotizing enterocolitis? So it mainly occurs in preterm babies uh, that are uh, low purse weight um, and uh, they are sort of uh, having a low um, um, immunity. So uh, it, was, it causes the, uh, the gut um, I mean, a bacteria to, to cause an inflammation in the wall and then causes perforation. Uh, what uh, other views will you take to confirm pneumoperitoneum? Um, lateral decubitus can be done to see uh, the air, um, I mean, at the right, uh, at the right hypochondry. And anything else? Um, Ultrasound can be done for, for follow-up to assess the, the uh, if there is any fluid and to assess the vascularity of the um, small bowel mucosa as well. Next case. Okay, uh, so this is um, an X-ray of an adult uh, patient. Uh, I can see that there is um, increased sclerosis, um, uh, I mean, increased bone density uh, of the um, of the image bones, uh, mainly in the uh, femur, pelvic bones, and the um, and the um, spine. However, there is no um, uh, ligamentous ossification in the spine. Um, I could see that the sacroiliac joints are intact. 
there is no evidence of fracture in any of the bones. I could see that there is an IUD in the pelvis. Um, and what I could see also is that there is uh, some lucency at the uh, paracolic um, gutters on either side. Um, in my routine practice, I will zoom to see um, if there is a sort of air under diaphragm of, or if there is any uh, other uh, views taken for the patient because I couldn't see no, here that the you can diaphragm. Ignore. You can ignore that okay. lucency. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm mainly concerned about the sclerosis and the heterogeneity in the bone. Uh, my differential will include the osteopoikilosis. My other differential will include the metastasis uh, from uh, a disease such as breast cancer. So I will correlate with the patient if there is any previous images um, available or if, if there is any CT to see if this was before, then this might be osteopoikilosis. If it is newly developed, then this patient should undergo mammogram. Um, and uh, ultrasound for any breast lesions and should undergo CT, chest, abdomen, pelvis to find the primary uh, cause. What other primaries do you expect other than breast? So um, in male patient, this is a female patient, so I'm excluding prostate, which is the commonest cause uh, bone metastasis. Uh, so other than breast, it can be a colonic carcinoma. Uh, it can be thyroid carcinoma as well. Um, less likely to be uh, endometrial or cervical carcinoma to cause this bone metastasis. This is the next case. Okay, uh, so this is um, a contrast uh, passing uh, through the esophagus probably uh, with a distal uh, esophageal stent placed. Uh, there is a, a lower esophageal um, narrow structure seen uh, proximal uh, to the stent um, this is to me probably an esophageal stent placed due to uh, esophageal narrowing. This can be due to any plastic process, uh, such as uh, esophageal carcinoma. Um, in my routine practice, I will see the other views uh, if available or dynamic images. Um, I will correlate these findings with any previous images for the patient or if there is CT. Uh, chest done, and if there is any uh, para uh, esophageal lymphadenopathy uh, or medicinal lymphadenopathy, um, and uh, then the patient should be referred for endoscopic uh, staging. Uh, um, I mean, to assess the uh, para esophageal lymph nodes as well as well as the uh, mural thickening and for biopsy, and then should undergo CT chest, abdomen, pelvis for staging, and referred to the uh, upper GIT uh, MDT for uh, further management by chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or a gastric pull-up operation. So, how do you interpret the narrowing? Um, it's a narrow segment uh, with apple core appearance. Um, so that's why I am suggesting more to be a neoplastic process rather than um, a, an inflammatory process uh, such as a post caustic um, uh, structure. Um, Would you uh, like to like... comment about the stent? Is the stent patent? Well, uh, the distal end of the stent appears to be, uh, I mean, through the lumen, it appears to be patent because I could see that the contrast is flowing to it, to the uh, gastric uh, lumen. Uh, but just uh, the proximal area, um, just proximal to the stent, there is a, a short and narrow structure um, that is just before the stent. So um, I, will, I will discuss this finding with the referring clinician if they would further uh, dilate it. Uh, this area by a dilator or brace the stent uh, more uh, proximally or just leave it under the, uh, the uh, I mean, the definitive management of the patient. Your next case, this is a paraplegic patient who had a spinal injury. Okay, so this is a, a right x-ray, uh, a right humerus x-ray uh, of a patient who is paraplegic. Um, what I could see here is that there is um, ossification surrounding the elbow joint as well as the uh, shoulder joint with a sort of uh, fusi fusion of the bones and forming sort of pseudoarthrosis uh, on both joints uh, as well as soft tissue calcification. In a paraplegic patient, my first differential would be my situs ossificans. Um, 
I will convey these findings to the uh, referring. Um, there was no history and... of trauma to the shoulder joint or the elbow joint. Okay. Um, so, other than my site is also vacant. Um, this can be due to um, chronic osteomyelitis. Um, I mean that there is um, a laminated uh, periosteal reaction that's uh, calcified um, as surrounding the distal uh, end of the humerus, um, as well as uh, presence of um, thickening around the bone. Uh, there is some industrial scalping uh, and expansion. Um, there is no soft, uh, there is no uh, sort of soft tissue masses related to the uh, to the elbow joint, um, and uh, what I could see here is that um, any there other is no differential ground. you would like to keep. Um, my site is ossificans is my first differential, and the other is chronic osteomyelitis. Okay. Uh, what other uh, types of calcification do you see in soft tissue? Um, okay, other types of calcification. So the, the, it can be either a metastatic uh, calcification, uh, deposits in cases uh, of hyperparathyroidism, um, and the other can be dystrophic uh, calcification. Okay. So this is the next case. This is a static image. Okay, uh, so this is a histosarpangiogram uh, of uh, an adult female patient. Um, I could see that uh, there is a uh, flowing of contrast to the uh, vagina, the cervix, and then to the uh, uterine cavity. However, I couldn't see fluid, uh, I mean, contrast passing to the uh, both pallubian tubes. So in my routine practice, I would see the other images and if there is any peritoneal uh, spell. If this is persistent, then I will be concerned about uh, bilateral tubal blockage. Uh, my and, first. Uh, would you like to comment about the endometrial cavity? Does that look yeah. normal? Yeah, I can see here that there is a, a sort of a feeling defect inside the endometrial cavity uh, that appears uh, hypodan uh, hypodense to me. Um, um, it is circumscribed, so my first differential will be uh, presence of ileomyoma. Um, other differential can be an endometrial polyp. Uh, I will take this case further by co uh, comparing with other uh, ultrasound images, if available, if this patient is known to have uh, any uh, leomyoma or polyps. Um, otherwise, we can take this case further by um, an um, transvaginal ultrasound uh, to see if there is uh, um, leomyoma or polyp and refer the patient to the gynecology team. Next case. Okay, uh, so this is just x-ray uh, of an adult patient. Uh, what I could see here is that uh, there is um, erythro... Um, just zoom a bit to the images. Okay, uh, what I could see here is that uh, there is um, uh, signs of um, enlarged uh, left uh, left atrium in the in the form of splaying of the carina, uh, double um, and double uh, right cardiac border and uh, obliteration of the aorta pulmonary window. So I would correlate if this patient is having previous echocardiogram demonstrating um, left uh, atrium enlargement. Um, my other differential uh, will include uh, that this might be. Um, bilateral hyaline lymphadenopathy uh, with uh, lymphadenopathy as well at the aorta pulmonary window. Uh, I will take this case further, as I said, by comparing with the previous images and if there is any echocardiogram available. Um, and if not... Um... Okay, there's a CT scan of this page. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, um, this is in a contrast uh, CT study. Uh, of the uh, non-conscious CT study uh, of the uh, same patient. What I could see here is that there is a right uh, paracardiac hypodense uh, mass lesion. 
there is no calcification um, or definitive fat density inside it. However, in my routine practice, I will measure the house field unit. So this is anterior mediastinal mass. Um, there is no hyalur. Um, sorry, I could see here that there is a word to pulmonary lymph node. Um, so uh, my differential for this uh, legion will include differential for anterior medicinal legions, which include uh, cymic um, carcinoma uh, and, um, and lymphoma. Uh, it's less likely to be uh, thyroid carcinoma or, um, or teratoma because there is no definitive fat density or calcification and there is no extension from uh, retrosternal thyroid. Uh, so this is again, um, if I make tumor or E lymphoma, I will take this case further by discussion in the uh, cardio um, cardiothoracic MDT and um, and um, biopsy can be done to diagnose the patient and then further um, CT um, abdomen and pelvis. Just in this case, I need to see if possible the uh, lung window and the bone window to see if there is any metastatic deposits as well. How do you think this patient would have presented? Um, I'm not sure, but in cymic carcinoma, they might have my senior gravis uh, in in one third of the patients. Next case. Okay, so this is uh, in X-ray uh, of the uh, bright uh, rest joints of a child. What I could see here is that in the distal end of the radius and ulna, there is cupping and fraying uh, of the bone, um, as well as a uh, sort of uh, bone spur, uh, bone, bony uh, projection and spurring at the um, um, at the distal end. This is suggestive of rickets. My differential will include the scurvy. Um, I will take this case further by, of course, looking if there is any pathological fractures. However, there is no here in this case. Um, and um, discussing and uh, see the orthogonal view because there might be a fracture that is subtle in the AB view but can be seen on the lateral view. And if there is no fracture, I will refer the patient for the pediatric team uh, to find if this is a primary or secondary rickets and manage the patient further. What are the types of rickets that you know? So there is uh, primary rickets and secondary rickets. Primary uh, is just due to deficiency of the uh, vitamin D or calcium. Secondary rickets can be due to um, insensitivity to vitamin D uh, and can be due to uh, renal uh, causes such as renal failure. Next case. Okay. So this is a, an ultrasound uh, of the testis. Uh, what I could see here is that uh, there is a peritesticular fluid as well as thickening of the uh, tunica uh, alpaginia. Um, in my routine practice, I would see the vascularity to see if this is associated with any sort of torsion. Um, can I see the Doppler images? Yeah, you can take the uh, Doppler images. Yeah. So I can see here that there is... Uh, intact vascularity um, inside the uh, testicles. So in my routine practice, I will compare both sites. Uh, in presence of uh, uh, good vascularity, um, I will be thinking of epididomorchitis uh, rather than um, rather than torsion. I will take this case further by uh, referring um, to the urology team uh, to uh, give antibiotics and uh, further follow up for clinical improvement of the patient. You can scroll this. Okay. So this is a CT uh, angiogram uh, of the aorta axial cuts, uh, including the abdominal part uh, and the the abdominal and the um, thoracic aorta. What I could see here is that there is a dissection flap. Um, at, um, at the level of the, uh, starting from below the level of the renal arteries. However, the renal arteries are spurred with normal perfusion of both kidneys. 
the sp the superior mesenteric um, artery as well as the Can you again point sphere. out the dissection flap which you are referring to? Oh, okay, sorry. So I think here that this is not part of the dissection. It might be a sort of um, thrombosis in the uh, wall of the aorta, uh, and therefore the uh, renal vessels and the superior mesenteric uh, vessels and the celiac vessels are intact as well. Um, here in the thoracic aorta, again, there is neural thrombosis, circumferential hypodense. Okay. But here I can see that there is double lumen, which is presenting dissection at the uh, distal part of the aortic arch and the beginning of the thoracic aorta. Uh, now I have to... Uh, this is probably distal to the origin of the left subclavian artery. So um, I will convey my findings to the um, medical team rather than the cardiothoracic team because this can be managed conservatively. Um, and I will correlate if the patient is known to have any history to, to cause this dissection, such as Marfan syndrome or ehler danlos Oh, sorry. So what are the signs of impending aortic rupture? Uh, so if there is sagging uh, of the uh, of the aortic wall uh, of the aortic wall to be um, to be more posterior lying on the vertebrae, uh, and if there is any uh, discontinuity uh, of the uh, the atheromatous plate in the um, aorta, and if there is any periaortic uh, fluid or leakage, all this will be suggestive of uh, impending rupture. The next case. Okay. This is a 40-year-old female patient who presented with pelvic pain. Okay, so this is a 40 years old uh, patient presenting with uh, pelvic pain. Um, what I could see here is that uh, there is normal wing of the uh, uh, and obliteration uh, of the sacroiliac joints. Um, on either side, however, anteriorly, it appears to me that the joint is a spur. Okay, uh, what's more uh, important to me or, or more significant for the patient is that I could see here that uh, there is a elliptic lesion in the right inferior pubic um, that is that has an um, that has an ill-defined margin um, with destruction of the surrounding bone. Uh, and again, there is similar lesion in the um, superior uh, right superior pubic ramus that's ill-defined with wild zone of transition, appear expansiolytic. I'll be concerned about um, an aggressive lesion. Uh, in uh, an old uh, female patient, I'll be concerned about metastatic disease. Uh, so I will, um, I will compare with previous images. Uh, and if not available, um, I would be concerned that this patient should have bone scan done for other metastatic lesions um, and the uh, CT chest abdomen pelvis to find the primary lesion. Apart from metastasis, what other differentials would you consider? Uh, my other differential can be multiple myeloma, uh, lymphoma. Um, um, other metabolic causes can be hyperparathyroidism. Um, um, other causes can be... Um, this is the ultrasound image of the okay. patient. Okay, so this is a renal ultrasound uh, of the uh, right kidney. Um, I can see that there is um, maintained cortic medullary differentiation. Um, however, I can see a hypodensity here. Um, this can be a mass in the kid related to the kidney. Yeah, um, know that. Okay, sorry. So, um, Read all uh, everything okay. written on the film, so that will help you get to the diagnosis. So it's written here the right iliac fossa, um, and this is a transplanted kidney. So okay, so probably this is a uh, what I could see in the bone is um, is manifestations of secondary hyperparathyroidism uh, in a patient with renal failure, and this is an image of the transplanted kidney. Next case. Okay, uh, 
This is a city um, axial cuts of the brain uh, non contrast uh, images. What I could see here is that there is a, an intra uh, parenchymal uh, hemorrhage. Sorry, I'm just having a problem with the scrolling. So this is uh, an intracerebral uh, hemorrhage at the uh, occipital, uh, at the right occipital loop. This is probably secondary to um, thrombosis in the uh, superior sagittal sinus and the and the confluence of sinuses. So I'm concerned about um, venous uh, hemorrhagic venous infarction in the brain. I will convey the findings to the referring uh, neuro neurologist to start anticoagulation for this patient uh, to resolve the. Uh, uh, venous sinus thrombosis. What other uh, imaging study will you recommend? Uh, MRV can be done for this patient to further assess the sinuses um, uh, occlusion. Next case. Okay. So this is coronal cuts um, um, of the abdomen post contrast study. What I could see here is that there is a portal uh, vein uh, thrombosis uh, extending to the uh, superior mesenteric uh, vein and causing um, the small uh, causing thickening of the um, mural, uh, mural thickening of the small bowel loops and congestion uh, of the mesentery as well as merging of the peri uh, intestinal um, fat planes. Um, this is an emergency. This is a, 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 a case of uh, venous uh, ischemia uh, in the small bowel. I'll compare the findings uh, to the referring uh, um, surgeon, probably, to start anticoagulation. Uh, and if the patient is not improving, we can uh, ask the um, vascular uh, intervention team to do a thrombectomy uh, for the uh, lesion in the uh, portal vein and the um, spermesenteric vein. Next case. Okay, so this is a case uh, of bone scan uh, in an adult patient. Uh, what I could see here is that uh, there is um, symmetrical diffuse increase uptake in the uh, bones, mainly the femurs and the um, upper limbs, um, as well as the um, head. Um, there is no uptake in the kidneys. So for me, this is a super scan. Uh, probably metabolic in course due to the symmetrical distribution. My first concern will be hyperparathyroidism. I'll take this case further by uh, correlation with the uh, laboratory findings, such as um, hyperparathormone level and uh, the renal function. Okay, the, you can correlate with the radiographs. Okay, uh, so this is a lateral uh, skull uh, X-ray of an adult patient. Uh, what I could see here that there is mottling appearance uh, of the low bone uh, and low bone density, uh, suggestive of uh, salt and paper appearance, which is again consistent with secondary hyperparathyroidism. Okay. So, candidate one, you are very good. You have picked up almost all the findings and you are completing the cases with the management. Only one thing uh, you are saying uh, x-ray for everything, just use the term radiograph. So mm -hmm. we'll just go through the cases. This was aortic aneurysm and this is a penetrating uh, atherosclerotic ulcer. So this is also a sign of uh, impending aortic rupture, which you have to pick up. And uh, earlier you called this as the dissection flap. This was a mural thrombus. So this is not a, dis a case of dissection. This was a uh, penetrating atherosclerotic ulcer, which I think uh, you, you could have asked for the orthogonal views to just confirm. Okay. So mm. then uh, this case, they, uh, there were these multiple osteolytic lesions. And uh, then which when a, whenever the film is provided, provided to you, provided you should read you should all uh, corners of the film like here it was written rif tx kidney so transplanted kidney so that first thing you have to read all the corners so you will get to the diagnosis because mostly in the ultrasound images these annotations will be provided so this was brown tumors and uh, transplanted kidney in this case you picked up very well there was a uh, thrombosis of superior sagittal sinus and uh, intraparenchymal hemorrhage 
and uh, when you are saying the management you have to also include that you will uh, ask for a mr venogram and uh, and second thing uh, for all the urgent uh, the emergency cases you you are like you are saying that it is an emergency but just focus that you you change your tone and like because you are speaking in the same tone so mm -hmm. it it doesn't uh, come out that uh, like uh, it, it you it doesn't come out that much so you should uh, say that uh, this is an emergency this i will urgently uh, inform these findings to the referring physician like two three times if you say so it uh, so it will uh, uh, come out that yeah you are concerned that this is an emergency condition so this case you picked up very well uh, there was uh, thrombosis of the superior mesenteric vein with uh, acute mesenteric venous ischemia of the bowel so there is nothing to add in this, but you you should comment that there is uh, no signs of uh, intestinal obstruction. There is no signs of uh, pneumatosis. There is uh, uh, no uh, free fluid. There is no uh, nemoperitoneum. All these uh, uh, the important negatives uh, you you should add. So that was lacking in this case. Otherwise, you picked up uh, the finding. You you called it as an emergency that everything is fine. But the important negatives for every case you have to include. Okay. Okay. So this was a, a super scan. Uh, this is a metabolic super scan uh, due to uh, hyperparathyroidism. This was very well picked. You cannot see the uh, renal shadows. Uh, there is bilateral symmetrical uptake in the uh, appendicular skeleton. So, uh, and uh, and whenever there is a, a image of the uh, nuclear uh, study given to you, you should always ask to correlate with the radiographs. So here you did not ask, you uh, directly commented that uh, this is a case of hyperparathyroidism, but you should also uh, say that, I. but in my practice, I would like to co correlate it with the uh, radiographs. Okay. So this case, we did not do. So this first case you picked up very well. This was a intracardiac thrombus and uh, the other differential, uh, it could be a myxoma. So uh, you have you, you will advise for an echocardiogram or a cardiac MR uh, for this. And then you should also comment that there are no signs of uh, uh, arterial pulmonary arterial hypertension or uh, right heart strain in this patient. There is no pleural effusion. The important negatives for every case you, you should include in your uh, in the description. Okay, so this case, I know it is quite uh, difficult. Uh, there are gallstones that you picked up very well on the axial, but then uh, you just forgot it, uh, forgot to correlate it because I also uh, like the I was giving you the hint that uh, just uh, look at the gallbladder and now uh, just correlate it. So this was actually a gallstone Elias case. So this is a gallstone. Okay, this uh, this is the transitional point of the obstruction which transitional point you can very well see on this coronal one this see you can appreciate the gallstone better now so yeah. this is a gallstone ileus and uh, there were gallstones in the uh, the gallbladder is contracted but here there are gallstones so this was uh, i was giving you hints but uh, you couldn't uh, like put all these things together you picked up uh, in the axial but then while summarizing you just forgot about it mm -hmm. okay so that's okay. Only one case uh, went a little bit heavy, but uh, rest everything was fine. Then this was again a left hyalur mass, very well picked up. Okay, this case again. Uh, these uh, sorry, doctor. In... Just in the previous case, I'm not sure because when when you opened the CT, I think it was an intermediate sign or something. And I was not sure if I was no, right. No, 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 no. This one uh, that was the other. That was another case. Ah, this was okay. a left hyalur mass. So okay. We didn't see the CT okay. for this. Okay. okay. So this one, uh, these two lesions, this one is an extra axial lesion. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other one was a, again an intraventricular lesion. Both the lesions are enhancing. So when you are given a contrast study, you are directly commenting that the lesions are enhancing, but you should add to it that in my routine practice, I would like to correlate with the pre-contrast study uh, just to uh, uh, confirm that there is enhancement of the lesion. So directly on the post-contrast study, you shouldn't comment that these lesions are enhancing. You should ask for the pre-contrast study or you should uh, just uh, add a comment that in my routine practice, I will correlate with the pre-contrast. I would like to check the pre-contrast before commenting about the enhancement of these lesions. And what you were seeing in the axial, this was some previous pre-operative uh, 
like uh, previous operative condition due to which there is this uh, meningeal enhancement so this can be ignored uh, like uh, in view of this case so these these are this is an uh, intraventricular meningioma and this is another uh, meningioma these both these lesions were meningiomas okay so you could have asked for other uh, sequences as well you could have asked for the pre contrast or the t2 just before uh, concluding the case okay so if little bit doubt also you have in any case you can ask for any other sequences before concluding the case okay so this one you were perfect uh, this is rheumatoid arthritis you can see uh, periarticular osteopenia uh, proximal uh, disease involving the carpal bones the uh, metacarpophalangeal joint and the proximal interphalangeal joints and there was uh, erosions so this case you described perfectly uh, and you completed the management also most of the cases you have described perfectly this case also you picked up the emergency very well uh, you commented about the lines and tubes in a very proper manner that uh, this is an emergency so first you will comment about the emergency and then you will uh, talk about the lines and tubes so this was also uh, very well picked up Okay. Uh, I was not sure about uh, was this an arterial or venous line and if it uh, is in no, place. Uh, yeah, this is an umbilical venous venous catheter, and this is an mm -hmm. uh, uh, this uh, 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 Ryle's tube. Yeah. Thank you. So this was a case of uh, sclerotic metastasis. Okay. So osteopoietic losses will not come in the differential because it is not just uh, around the joints; it is everywhere. Osteopoikilosis mm -hmm. you will expect near uh, on either side of the joint lines. So that is not a good differential for this. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the first differential uh, which would be expected for this case would be a sclerotic metastasis rather than osteopoikilosis. Okay. So, okay. Again, in this one, the it is basically, this is a, a, a carcinoma of the esophagus, which you very well picked up that there is this uh, apple coring and a tight stricture, but there is an esophageal stent placed. So, uh, the stent was placed because there was a carcinoma, right? So, and you can see the lesion uh, which is away from the stent. So, basically, the stent has slipped. Okay, so this is a case of a mm -hmm. carcinoma of the esophagus with a slipped stent. The stent is patent. You uh, you can see the contrast uh, has passed through the stent. It is opacifying uh, the uh, bowel distally. But uh, the there is a filling uh, defect. There is the stricture which is seen proximal to the stent. So basically, this is an esophageal carcinoma with slipped esophageal stent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so this patient, this was a paraplegic patient and uh, if there is no history of trauma provided, then this is heterotopic ossification. If there was a history of trauma given to you, then uh, myositis ossificans will be the first differential. But in paraplegic patients uh, with spinal injury, you will expect uh, ossification around the joints and that is uh, commonly heterotopic ossification. So it is, it is just about differentials and about uh, the history that is provided to you. So, myositis was a good differential uh, provided the history of uh, trauma is given. Okay. So, this was correct. Then again, uh, this is a fibroid. And uh, you were very uh, correct to say that you will uh, do a uh, transvaginal ultrasound to confirm or you will correlate with the previous uh, images if available. And uh, another uh, good differential was an endometrial polyp. So, for this case, you were good enough. Okay, so this was the case that you were talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the anterior mediastinal mass. Here you can see the obtuse angle. It is broad based towards the mediastinum. The left hilum looks uh, okay only. You were uh, telling that it looks like a bilateral hilal lymphadenopathy. The left hilum is not enlarged. So this you can see the, con uh, the convexity, the lateral convexity of this lesion. If you can appreciate here, there is a convex margin uh, laterally. And uh, this was a thymoma. You were uh, continuously telling that this is a thymic carcinoma. A thymic carcinoma will be more aggressive. It will be very ill-defined aggressive. It will be infiltrating. Okay, so this, this lesion is a very uh, well-defined lesion, right? Yeah. So... Uh, before commenting about thymic carcinoma, if it is a very well-defined, smooth, marginated lesion, then it is a thymoma. 
thymic carcinoma is more aggressive and lymphoma is a good differential for an anterior mediastinal mass but lymphoma will not be uh, this well circumscribed okay so you could have asked for the contrast images as well and uh, okay your uh, the i asked you about the presentation of this patient then uh, that was uh, you uh, commented that patient will present with myasthenia gravis but it is usually associated with thymoma okay myasthenia gravis is then this was rickets you picked it up very well and described very well so there was nothing more to add in this and uh, yeah, this last case, uh, yeah, there is an uh, uh, epidemioarchitis. There was increased vascularity. You asked for the color doctor images. That was very nice because on the uh, grayscale images, you cannot comment uh, more than what you had said. So this case was you were perfect. But then again, in this case, you did not uh, comment that this is an emergency and I will urgently inform these findings. You you just said that you will inform, uh, you will uh, uh, advise for an antibiotic treatment. But you have to say that this is, this is actually an emergency condition. So you have to inform the referring physician. Okay. So you were good. You have, your speed is good. You are picking up the findings very well. But a little bit of uh, uh, the... A management part uh, that you have to add to your cases otherwise everything is very very good thank you very much Dr. Pong. thank okay. you so, dr weber yeah dr Bumi. Uh, a really well conducted session and uh, thank you so much for first uh, accepting the invite and uh, being uh, so generous over here to share after uh, completing your examination. Oh, thank so, you so much for, uh, for uh, first... giving me this opportunity. Yeah. I'm really uh, pleased to be here. Okay, so I will... Uh, yeah, uh, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I just thought I'll I I just wanted to share my experience. Yeah, please please go ahead. So okay, I have made this uh, list of the books that I went through. See, personally, what I would like to say is that it the preparation it depends on the individual level, and uh, we have to decide where we stand and how we need to go about it. So these were the basic books which I felt that this should be read by each and every one of us even if you are very good or if you are very bad like if, even if you are starting from the scratch or if you are very good. So these were certain books which actually got a very good up, which have a good approach which make you think uh, from that uh, to be approach like how you need to think about the cases and all. Then uh, about the viva and the long cases, I think uh, it doesn't need a separate preparation. It can go together. Uh, just apart from that, that uh, for the long cases, I had practiced typing some of the cases like in the last uh, 10 or 15 days just to see if I can finish the cases in time or how much time I have left to uh, just go through the cases again. So I was about to complete almost everything uh, in uh, like... Uh, I had some 10 minutes left. So that was the speed with which I was going through. And uh, in the main exam, I found it even little difficult because when we are sitting in that exam situation, we try to be uh, like little more cautious for everything. So how the time which we are taking to practice at home, I think we should add another five or 10, five minutes to what we actually are uh, using in the exam setup. And uh, the online resources which I used was, uh, I took a revised radiology subscription for the long cases and the rapids. Then there is FRCR longs, but I have not taken the subscription. So I will not comment that how it is. Revised radiology was very good. And then I attended the online webinars. And uh, for the rapids, uh, I would recommend these two books. And uh, the, the rapids I had practiced online from uh, RAD exams and revised radiology. So again, in the rapids, what I found was uh, like if I was completing a set of rapid in say 16 to 17 minutes at home, but in the exam, just because that time factor was there and I was trying to be more cautious for everything. So it added another five minutes. So what I would say that either we uh, you make an approach how you have to uh, do it on the exam day and you follow the same approach from the very first day. Like if you are doing the first uh, question of the rapid 
and you are following your entire checklist and you are giving so much time to that so follow that approach till the exam so you have to like make your own strategy how you want to do the rapids some people say that the first uh, set you just have a quick look and finish it off in 10 minutes that is also fine some people say that uh, you finish your entire checklist in the first run and you give it another uh, like 15 to 17 minutes and then revise it twice just uh, quickly uh, in the next two runs. So that is also fine. So it depends on the personal point of view how you want to do it for the rapids that I feel. So anything you would like to add Dr. Bharat or Dr. Weber? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to just uh, quickly ask some questions. Uh, the which uh, rapid uh, online platform did you find the closest to the exam? Uh, I found rad exams closer. Okay. Because revised radiology has got a lot of like it is good for practice, but uh, like considering the individual sets, uh, rad exam has got a variety of cases uh, which is closer to the main exam. Any new uh, pattern which you saw in the examination which you were not aware about or the colleagues which gave the exam with you were uh, saying about uh, something new which they were not expecting in the examination, something which might have caught off guard to people? No, I don't feel so. I think, see, the long cases were straight enough. But the only thing, the long cases are actually lengthy, which I was just, I, like, I heard the seniors saying that the long cases are lengthy, it'll take time. And I and that is what I actually felt, that it, these long cases are quite lengthy because they are easy, they are straightforward, so we try to give our best to them. So there, that is the part where the time factor plays a very big role. So uh, that uh, and uh, and another thing was like when we do these rapids at home, we are used to uh, doing using the zoom button and changing the window contrast everything. We do that a lot. But in the main exam, I didn't find it helpful in anything like the the more number of times I was trying to change the window, it used to get even worse. So ultimately at the end of it, I found that, okay, whatever settings they have given is the best settings for me to see. And even the zoom button was not required. Like I was, the images are already so big enough that you don't actually need to zoom them. So if we are doing that, we are actually wasting more time. Uh, did you employ the strategies on rapid as many people suggest? to mark the abnormals first and uh, then just flag the other uh, things which you, which is doubtful and if you count 16 abnormals you are mostly on the right track did you uh, no, follow I, such what kind I, of strategy I or did did you one by one? Uh, what I did I did one by one but I marked the normals like wherever uh, the normals I marked and wherever I had a doubt I, I marked that is what I flagged uh, the ones in which I was confident enough like the abnormal which I was confident I left it like that then in the second run uh, I just went through the flagged ones and then I counted how many were the normals and how many were the abnormals in the last one any time you gave that the first run should be completed in a particular time you yeah that's, that's what uh, like when i used to practice at home i was about to finish it uh, quite fast but in the exam it took longer okay so, yeah this uh, happens yeah so, that is what i was trying to say that whatever time we we take at home so we should count another five minutes extra in the exam so we should be in that mindset because uh, what happened with me also like I was about to finish the first run in a, around I think uh, 21 minutes or something. So that the, that time factor became a very big factor there. Then I, I got just puzzled that what to do now. I don't have so much time to uh, take another two runs. But the good part was I had flagged those in which I had a doubt. So... If you completed it in 21 minutes, that is really commendable because then you have a lot of time. It's what I think. 21 minutes is really fast to complete the entire report. And a uh, few more things I wanted to ask. The books which you showed over here, uh, those were the only books which you referred to or the, you used to read something else as well? No, for uh, to be like particularly, I read these books and then I attended almost all the webinars that are going on with and the YouTube lectures. I think I think I 
prepared more in the uh, viva and uh, this this uh, discussion fashion rather than going through the theory books like uh, so like wherever i had a doubt i referred to radiopedia like that, that was the way i read rather than going through the theory books okay uh, and uh, how much time did you take for the exam preparation um uh, somewhere around 2 uh, months to 2 to 2.5 months like the first 15 days to get orientation of what is happening because there are actually there are so many uh, sources available that uh, we we have to cut that short that what we can do that is what i feel because so many things are there the there is an endless list of books there is the endless lists of subscriptions that we can take and uh, like even these like revised radiology long cases uh, there are so many cases so we cannot type in each and every case so in the end i was just going through the cases like in a viva form like i was just seeing the cases i was speaking to myself that okay i will speak it like this in the viva and, and i would uh, read the uh, answers so that is how i because there is there is so much of material to go through that it is never going to end so i had to uh just list down what i can finish and uh, then i went in that direction because once we start understanding that what all is available we get lost so i think everyone needs to uh, decide their own approach that okay this is my weak point or uh, this is my pattern how i have to study first we we should understand that pattern and then we go about it so i think it will be easier how did you used to prepare for viva you had study partners with you no no i w- i was doing it myself because i think that uh, time factor was always an issue so wo- like when i was going through the books i would like read it out to myself that okay if i have to speak this x ray then i will speak it like this and then i would read the answer okay so uh, any courses did you uh, attend i had attended this uh, john curtis course that was the only one course i had attended that okay. online uh, course uh, which uh, he will take okay okay that was the only course you attended yeah yeah that was the only one i had attended okay. so that course is for viva or for something no, else uh, that is for uh, it had uh, sort of viva but i felt that it is more like the routine john curtis webinars and because yeah. the uh, if we are attending his lectures right from the starting like when he mm-hmm. starts with a new session so uh, he is showing a good number of cases with a very good variety and again that course is for four uh, like it has got four sessions so uh, they do it as a viva form uh, in each session they will be showing around uh, 25 to 30 uh, cases and uh, they have like around three to four hot seat candidates who will be presenting those cases so it's like how we are doing okay, the viva so... and in between like after every case they will be explaining the major uh, like uh, whatever theory part is there okay so you routinely uh, do all cross sectional studies at your workplace yeah routinely i'm doing all cross sectional yeah so i think so that also helps yeah that makes a, actually yeah. yeah i what i feel is like the more we work in the department is the main factor that is going to help us because... now one of the most common query which you might have also faced uh, where, did you do anything special for the nuclear scans uh no i felt this uh, sidhu book i think has got a very good uh, nuclear uh, cases and collection the I sidhu think... book which you are showing the sixth yeah, number yeah 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 the sixth list. number one the sidhu sidhu book is the one which has got very good uh, explanation for all the nuclear cases so that was the one which i had revised the day before my viva also because it has got us uh, i think only 14 or 15 cases they have uh, in that and uh, they have given a very good explanation which will clarify almost uh, 90% of the nuclear doubts and rest whatever had come i was seeing it in these uh, webinars and the, the routine lectures that we follow so in that i did okay so that is pretty much all the questions which are mostly asked or uh, some chat uh, some people were asking that uh, uh, in the case which you showed nec was there pneumoperitoneum yeah so that uh, pneumo candidate was, uh, yeah ha yeah. uh, she had pointed out that uh, yeah, there yeah. is a pneumoperitoneum 
Yeah. So I think so that was the one of the doubts. So, so thank you so much, Doctor Bhumi. Thank you. Uh, thank it was you. a wonderful session, and yeah. uh, we are uh, grateful. And I think so. Even the candidates today here might have le- uh, might have learned some uh, new points, and uh, it would have been very uh, useful for them uh, during their preparation as well. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming here and sharing your uh, exam experience with us. Uh, we will uh, like to collaborate with you as well in the future, and uh, all yeah, the very sure, best sure. for your all the very best for your future endeavor. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you so, thank much, you so we, much. Thank you so much, guys. We'll meet uh, next week. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Bhumi. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.